Hi, Tim Ecker here, creator of the Angle Right System. In this video, I'm going to show you the end stage of building a rail. And uh, this uh, rail behind me is all jigged up and ready to weld. Um, we've used the system to notch all the parts together um, and build a rail. It's ready to weld uh, as it is, or we could disassemble it by uh, taking away certain components and reassembling it somewhere else. Everything would line up um, with the other parts as it is here, um, but just by leaving key components behind, um, or, or on the tubes, I should say. This is helpful for uh, if you're building in an area that's uh, either you've got inclement weather and you can't be TIG welding outside um, and you need to build it outside or uh, in, you're near flammable materials or um, uh, fine finishes that you can't afford to damage uh, on an expensive yacht in this instance. Um, also quite helpful uh, if you don't uh, do the welding and you need someone to do it, you could uh, disassemble it, uh, reassemble it somewhere else, uh, it would all line up again and uh, they could weld it in their shop. Uh, in this case, I built this in a space um, other than our normal welding shop because of uh, the COVID-19 uh, outbreak that we're currently experiencing and didn't want to be um, in close proximity to other people. Um, so. Uh, I may weld this here or I may um, take it apart and reassemble it um, without losing any alignment and, uh, and weld it somewhere else. So let's have a look at all the components. First component we're going to look at is the base clamp. This is made up of the base pads, the angle guides, and the clamping die assembly. Uh, and this is used when your tube is going to intersect a flat surface and you want to um, uh, clamp it into position that way. Uh, in this case, the, uh, the angle guides can disconnect here with these pins and this will go into the miter notcher to do this miter cut. And a lot of times what I'll do when I'm building this to a jig like this, this plywood is just a temporary jig, I'll bore a hole through the plywood, let the tube run along. Um, if I'm not certain of uh, this angle and I want to kind of readjust it and build it by eye or um, just tweak it in some way, um, that's what I would do so that once I know um, where I want it, I lock this in place, tightening these and tighten this onto the tube. Then you've locked in the length, rotation and angle information and you could take this uh, leave the base behind pull these put an adapter on it cut the miter cut and then pop it back in here and um, it'll fit up just as it is here it's quite uh, quite easy and quick and you don't um, you don't have to uh, you know guesstimate anything so uh, if this was Going to be moved somewhere before we weld it, I would leave these base pads uh, fastened to the surface um, and these parts can come off. There's a stop set here so this can come off and just leave this on the tube and as long as you don't change this position or this, uh, this will all re-index at a different location and uh, so it's easily movable um, and re-indexable. Here's the next setup I wanted to show. Um, this is just up from the base clamp uh, that we just looked at. And this is designed to hold these tubes that intersect this vertical tube in the proper position so that um, they are at the same level and appear to follow right through this tube and come out the other side. Typically, I, without the clamp, I used to um, tack weld and try it and look at it, but then if I had to move it because I didn't like it, then um, uh, I'd have to bust the tacks and, uh, and then grind them and try it again. So this uh, saves a lot of time there. 
this whole assembly can uh, be taken apart and uh, as long as you leave these clamping dies on each tube and uh, have these stops set, um, this will all re-index if you wanted to move this to a different location and reset it up. You wouldn't need all these stops if you know the, like on this particular setup, these are both at zero degrees and uh, because this these are in line with each other, these two horizontal tubes. So typically I'd just have one stop, but uh, this one's set up with three and that's handy. That's about it for this setup. Here's the final setup I wanna show in this video. Uh, this is a typical setup with the primary clamp on the top rail and the secondary clamp holding the intersecting uh, leg coming up to it. Um, and this whole assembly, if you're gonna disassemble it and take it somewhere else, comes apart right at this juncture right here. There's two pins that uh, lock this together. Uh, you loosen these and pop them off, pop the second, these angle guides of the secondary clamp off the pins on both sides and, and this joint will come apart and you can reassemble it somewhere else. Um, the only thing you need to do is to make sure that the primary clamp is tensioned enough so it can't rotate or slide. Um, and then this secondary clamp die, die set here needs to be tight on this vertical, uh, the vertical leg. And uh, these angle guides can come off. You've got a stop that you can set so the angle will re-index. And uh, yeah, so that's about it. Um, this is a very typical setup that I use um, when building things because it, uh, it allows you to jig it nicely and, and uh, the, uh, the notching ability of our notchers is fully integrated with the secondary clamp so uh, the notching comes out to the right length and uh, doesn't allow the tube to rotate throughout the process of building so um, and then of course the primary clamp which we'll show in other videos is used to compensate for the weld distortion that takes place here uh, when this weld is done so that the top rail comes out straight or uh, with the same curve that you start out with. So um, it's not only to keep things straight, it's to, it's to keep it um, with your intended curvature as well. Here's the rail all jigged up with clamps. Um, no welding has been done yet. The next step will be to uh, weld it out. Uh, and we use the primary clamps to compensate for weld distortion so that everything comes out straight and true. Um, all the fabrication was done using this system, all the notching and miter cutting with our uh, abrasive notcher and the uh, miter notcher. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, please subscribe and we'll see you next time. Thanks.